you know, I was, they, they say that if you're going to be arrogant, if you're going to act like you are entitled, you must also put in the work, you must also put in the shift. And I think that what happened in the Ghana-Gabon game was a match where the Ghanaians thought that they would win the game. So they were not looking at their own fault, their own errors. They were just feeling like they were entitled to win. And when that win didn't come, they looked for every excuse to fight and get angry. Even in the press conference, you could see Andrea Yu being very arrogant, acting like, oh, it's their right. So let's highlight a few things in this game. Ghana came into this tournament with Jordan Ayu, who scored one goal in forever uh, as their leading striker. And then his brother, Dede or Andre Ayu, is supposed to be the link between midfield and attack. Now, what Jordan does is he drifts to the right or sometimes to the left without having anybody to replace him. Now, his brother goes in, but then at the same time, struggle to come back to come support Pat, Thomas Patty and the others in midfield. That makes him tire very quickly. So a player that is supposed to be the playmaker for the team is practically replacing his dad. He's practically playing as a number 10. But hey, because they're playing a 4-3-3 formation, uh, he feels like he's supposed to be the link between midfield and attack. And sometimes if his brother drifts away, he's going to fill in that void. But I don't know if the coach is afraid to substitute uh, Jordan Ayu. Jordan Ayu does not add value to the team. You have 25 more minutes to go. Jordan Ayo was already winding at the clock, was already holding ball to the sideline, was already playing like, oh, they've already won this game. It's maybe uh, the final minute of at a time. That, for me, is stupidity on the Ghanaian side. They had the time in the second half to build up play and go forward. But then, if you look carefully, there was no arrow. There was actually nobody, even in the build of that play, that the game or the ball was going to be directed to. That was what happened in the first game, and that's again the same thing that happened in this game against Gabon. They are lucky that the Gabonese also missing a few players like Obama Young. Not, not like I'm saying Obama Young would have come in and scored a hat trick because his current form does not even support that conversation or argument. Having said that, though, I must state here that if Ghana get knocked out of the group game, yes. I mean, look at Andre Ayo's comments from the press conference. I'm sure that the Comoros are watching the game and telling themselves what gives him the right, what insolence, what arrogance to make him think, oh, we would, we are Ghanaians, we will beat uh, Comoros in the last. <laughs> Come on. That, there's so much stupidity in that. I think that if Ghana don't put their heart together, Comoros will beat them, they'll get knocked out of the competition. Nothing will happen, the competition will still go ahead. Well, as a Nigeria, I look forward to Nigerians' game tomorrow. I look forward to, to us playing as good as we played against Egypt and convert our chances. I also saw in the press conference where uh, Moses Simon said that the, under the previous coach, he was playing to instruction. And this new coach gave them freedom. Most times when I see players come out to make this type of comment, I get a little bit worried. How? Worried in the sense that you're not telling us that maybe Ganatra was shackling you before, right? Let's even accept it. But was Ganatra also the one that says that you shouldn't make proper crosses? Because when it comes to crossing, I don't think that any coach will tell you when you get to the byline or when you dribble uh, to near the 18 yard bus, you should make a horrible cross. The real thing that needs to be fixed in Moses Simon's game is not freedom or imprisonment or shackles off his feet or on his field. What really needs to be fixed is his crosses. As good a game as he had, like he said, one of the best games he's played in the last two years. As good a game as he had against Egypt, his crosses were also suspect. And I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not here to bash him. Honestly speaking, he did very well. The most impressive game I've seen him play since he started playing for the national team. And I agree with him. There was so much freedom. There was so much movement going forward and coming back. Good. But please, can you help us work on your crosses? The accuracy of your crosses will give the center forward players more goals opportunity. If they don't take it, we'll know. We'll turn the satellite and face them and say, okay, you'll be getting these chances, you're not taking them. Overall, I mean, Cameroon has scored six goals in this tournament so far. Kudos to them. They are the reason why we still think that there's plenty of goals in this tournament. Other than that, teams have been struggling with goals. Now, for the team of the day for me, 
Guys, this is not me rubbishing them, but I think I never saw Malawi coming to win against Zimbabwe. I'm not saying that Zimbabwe is a big side, but I never saw that. The most disappointing team of the tournament for me so far would have to be Senegal. In their second game, they couldn't get a win. In their first game, I thought that the referee helped them to get past the finishing line. That wasn't a good win. That was just them, you know, you know, maneuvering their way to get through. I just hope that somewhere they can win uh, their last game. Even whatever it is, I'm sure they'll qualify. Either as best third team or they'll qualify with seven points if they win their last game. But And I hope that they improve their game as they go. Probably people like Sadimani and other... European players playing for Senegal are in a hurry to go back to their club. As we saw that Liverpool without the African players who are playing in the League 2 tournament in Africa uh, were unable to win against Arsenal who were even playing with 10 men in the Carabao Cup. So I know that uh, your club will give anything for the Liverpool players to come back. This one that I'm saying that Egypt should win their game tomorrow against Guinea. Uh, somewhere in Jurgen club said he's praying that Egypt should lose but if Mo Salah is not going to play well I think the rest of Egypt players are good enough to win that game but then we've seen surprises in the tournament already and more surprises are going to come well I'll be here uh, tomorrow on this channel giving you guys my own analysis on the live match of the live streaming my analysis as the Nigerian match goes on from 5pm but until then let's just hear your take on what you think about the Ghanaian game the, the way it ended and their behavior. And if you watched from Super Sports, uh, because I was watching on multiple athletes, uh, the comments of Asamogian and the fact that at the press conference, um, Andrea Yu was saying that uh, we are Ghanaian who beats Camaros. What do you think about those comments? Let's have your take on the comment section. Uh, please do it to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button so that uh, we grow all together. And this channel is not just our own. We all own it. Let's make it big. And thank you to everyone who's viewed our previous content. Continue to help us view, comment, and share amongst your friends. Have a lovely day.